What's your picture in the upper right hand corner? As we begin, I just want to make you aware we're having a little bit of a sound issue with our tech this morning. We have a bunch of people on Zoom on the camera in the back, um, but they can't hear us with our mics. So that's why my phone is here. So you can say hi to everybody. So they're all right here. <laughs> um, so if you hear somebody pipe in or you see me, it looks like I'm texting in church. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just trying to help with this. All right. <laughs> um, and if you would like to text in church, please feel free. If you can invite somebody to participate, that would be amazing. <laughs> All right. So thanks for your patience and we shall begin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The 
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Go back and move the camera around. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Vicki, we can hear you in that room talking to her. <laughs> so just mute yourself, please. First reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 4 through 20. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to his wife Penina and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival used to provoke her severely to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year, as often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore, Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband, Elkanah, said to her, Hannah, why Thanks. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Testing. Before you start, Testing. Marjorie, Vicki, do you have a message? Okay. We can hear me on my phone. There we go. I think we're, I think I was muted. I think this mic is on and my mic is on. Oh, wait, there we go. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Uh, today's psalm is Hannah's prayer from First Samuel chapter two. Hannah prayed and said, my heart exalts in the Lord and my strength is exalted in my God. My mouth is in my enemies because of my choice, my favorite glory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk on very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bones of the mighty are broken, and the feeble burst on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry are fat with spoil. The baron has testing, born testing. seven, but she who has many children has born. The, the Lord kills and brings to life. 
He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord raised the poor and the rich. rich. He also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. Testing. The Lord, his adversaries shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the end of the earth. Thanks to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 through 25. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts. And I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without waver. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines, but this is just the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Good morning. I don't know about your families, but for me and my family, we haven't been to a movie theater in a very long time. And I miss that. I'm an avid movie goer. So I really miss the movies. So this morning, at least figuratively, let's go to the movies. And while we're going to the movies, let's do a double feature. And the first movie that we're going to see this morning is a movie that was made in the early 1960s. It was a black and white movie. And it's called Inherit the Wind. It's the story of the so-called Scopes Monkey Trial. When this teacher in a small town in Tennessee dared to talk about the theory of evolution in a classroom. Now this movie stars Spencer Tracy, Gene Kelly, and Frederick March, among others. And Frederick March plays a character whose name is Matthew Harrison Brady. But Matthew Harrison Brady is just a thinly veiled, curmudgeonly version of William Jennings Bryan. William Jennings Bryan, the great commoner, the, 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 the Nebraska, Nebraska populist, populist who was a conservative, conservative religious figure. figure. And, and William Jennings, Jennings Bryan, Bryan in the port, in the being portrayed as Matthew Harrison Brady. Um, I'll take care of that for you. Okay. <laughs> being portrayed as Matthew, Matthew Harrison Brady. His script is in this movie, when he's testifying at the Scopes Monkey trial, is scripted in this movie to say, I don't think about the things that I don't think about. Now, he also says in this movie, I am more concerned about the rock of ages than the ages of rock. But in his statement about, I don't think about the things that I don't think about, he is telling us that he doesn't really have much intellectual curiosity. His mind is made up. He has fear of change, and he's not going to change. In fact, for Brady, change is kind of like a lurking, grotesque monster of fear that he just doesn't want to contemplate, and he's going to avoid it any time and any place that he can. 
So let's fast forward to our next movie. This one was made in 2004. It's a movie called The Terminal. The Terminal stars Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is, a, is portraying a man whose name is Victor Noworski. He comes from a fictional country called Krakosia. And on his way from Krakosia to Kennedy Airport in New York, there is a revolution in his country. And when he gets to New York, the United States no longer recognizes the government of Krakosia. And so he is stuck in John F. Kennedy Airport. He can't go back to Krakosia, and because he no longer has a valid passport, or a valid visa, or any kind of valid papers, he is trapped in John F. Kennedy Airport. He can't leave. So the rest of the movie is really about his living for nine months in a terminal in John F. Kennedy Airport. Now that's all well and good, but the fact of the matter is the movie The Terminal is based on real life. It happened to a man named Mirhan Karimi Nasseri, who was an Iranian who was kicked out of Iran, and he finds himself in Paris, France at Charles de Gaulle Airport. He too no longer has a passport or any valid ID or any connection with the country of Iran because he was kicked out of Iran. So he has no acceptable papers whatsoever. He too was allowed to live in Charles de Gaulle Airport. Not for nine months, not for a year, not for three years, not for five years. He lived in Charles de Gaulle Airport for 18 years in Terminal 1. Now he did once attempt early on to fly to England, but when he got to London, they turned him back and he wound up again in Charles de Gaulle Airport. Now, since Mr. Nasiri couldn't go anywhere, he couldn't go he couldn't fly internationally, he couldn't go back to Krakosia. They allowed him to live in Terminal 1 of Charles de Gaulle Airport. Now the French in their usual haste to get things done, after 11 years, they decided that they would give him a residency por permit and an international travel card. So he could leave the airport and he could go anywhere, if he had the money, he could go anywhere in the world because he had an international travel card. Now here's where the story gets a little weird. Testing one of these, it's live. But it's he not. refuses to leave Terminal 1. He likes the bench and this chair and the place where he's sleeping and the fact that the airport employees are feeding him and he has restroom facilities where he can, where he can clean himself up every day. So he is afraid to leave Charles de Gaulle Airport and the familiar things that he, that he knows about. He simply was not willing to risk change. He feared to risk change. And like Matthew Harrison Brady in Inherit the Wind, he knew what he knew, and he was not going to change no matter what. Now, I tell you these stories because they represent the example of all of us human beings who are resistant to change. And there's a ton of social research that tells us that we are all resistant to change. In fact, the contemporary American theologian Stanley Hauerwas phrases it this way. You have to realize, says Hauerwas, that many people are quite resistant to any kind of change. They like the answers they already have. And they're not going to examine anything else. Now in this morning's Gospel from Mark, 
Jesus is talking to us about change. But in, his, in this case, he's talking about a momentous, earth-shattering change for the Jewish people and for the Jewish community. As he is, and, and several of his disciples are passing the white and gleaming walls of the temple, Jesus says in this morning's gospel, not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. Now, it may be hard for us sitting here today in, in our society and in our culture to understand what a cultural volcanic explosion that would have been for the Jews. The temple was not only the center of their religious life, but because the re their religious life was so intricate, intricate, intricately interwoven with their society and their culture, tearing down the temple, in many respects, would have been an attack on the very center of what they were about. The destruction of the temple would simply have been unimaginable to the Jewish people. And here yet Jesus is saying to them, this is going to be torn down. Not one stone will be left to stand to top another. The disciples he was talking to, Peter and James and John and Andrew, had to be terribly af afraid. They, they had to be distressed and almost overwhelmed with the news that Jesus was predicting. They must not have known what it is that they could possibly do. Their brains simply couldn't cope with what they were hearing. And you hear in their questions, you know, if, if you or I had heard that, we probably would have asked questions like, how is it possible that this is going to happen? What is it that we could do to change the direction of this catastrophe that is going to happen to us? But that's not the questions they ask. They simply say, when is this going to happen? And tell us about the signs that we're going to see before this happens. It is the fact that they really are oblivious to the, to the disaster that's about to fall upon them. They couldn't fathom this sort of stupendous change that they were about to see. And so they simply withdrew into the realm of, of a place where where they could feel some sense of safety, where they didn't have to be fearful about thinking, about thinking about something that was going to produce such anxiety for them. Like the movies Matthew Harrison Brady and our friend the displaced Mirhan Nasseri, in their fear, the disciples couldn't see beyond what they thought were absolute certainties. They had created in their own minds something that was unchangeable for them. And in each of these stories, in the story of Matthew Harrison Brady or Mr. Nasseri or in the story of the disciples, all they could see was that change meant something negative. There wasn't anything positive. They simply were holding fast to these truths that they thought they knew. They were living in the kind of cocoon of their own comfort zone. And anything that was beyond that, they just couldn't see. Now, while today's gospel is definitely in the ap apocalyptic tradition, it's definitely a piece of apocalyptic literature, Jesus' message isn't one of doom and gloom. In fact, Jesus' message is one of hope. And you, you hear that in the four words that he ush, it utters in verse 7 when he says, do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Much, says Jesus, is left to happen. There's still time to put aside your fears. There's still time to make changes. There's still time to resist making changes. 
there's still time for Christ's salvation to engage with our hearts and our minds and our souls. No matter what the circumstances are, whether they good or be they ill, he's suggesting that we need to look beyond the immediate events. That if we can just give up of some of what we think we know, we think are certainties, and instead put our trust in God who sent his son, who sent his son Jesus to embody for us a message of freedom, to embody for us a message of hope. If we can do that, then we can begin to drop some of our own created barriers to change. In trusting, we can begin to conform ourselves to the image of Christ, to begin to be in Christ as Christ is in us. And of course, Jesus is the ultimate transformative work. change agent. I, you can Jesus hear is the herald and the instrument of the creation yeah, of a world anew. You can hear me here. Like you can hear As you heard last week from the 21st chapter of Revelation, behold, I am making all things new. Jesus calls us to step away from that comfort zone to be with him and in him in this inspired adventure of reformation. St. Paul tells us in his second letter to the Corinthians, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, behold, the new has come. But in order for this new to come, our fears have to be recognized. Our personal barriers have to be recognized and they have to be taken down. Had the disciples been able to look beyond their fears, if they had been able to look beyond their preconceptions, if they had been able to wrap their heads around the possibility of something positive, they might have seen that Jesus' prediction of the destruction of the temple might have actually led to something positive. And the temple was destroyed in A.D. 70 by the Romans. And what happened? There was a dramatic change in Judaism as they knew it. The powerful Sadducees of the temple cult virtually disappeared. And the, the temple rite was actually replaced with this sort of broad dispersion of synagogues and synagogue prayer services that replaced the temple cult. And the, the diversity of Jewish literature, simply an interpretation of the scriptures, simply exploded. The Pharisees themselves morphed into what we would call a, a rabbinic tradition, the tradition of the rabbis. And all of this diversity, the ultimate outcome of all of this diversity, simply made it easier for the growth and the expansion and development of Christ followers throughout the Roman world. So in thinking about this, ought we too not spend some time looking to recognize our own fears? to remove the barriers we have, those fears and those barriers that prevent us from making the kinds of changes in our own lives that would help us join more closely with the Jesus movement to make all things new. Unlike the fictional Matthew Harrison Brady, perhaps sometimes we do need to think about the things that we don't think about. Amen. Let us stand and proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one, one God, God, the Father, the, Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth, of all, all that, that is seen and unseen. And unseen 
We believe, we believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, only the only Son, Son of God, God eternally begotten, begotten of the Father, God from God, God light from light, true God from true God, from true God begotten, begotten not, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became, he became incarnate, incarnate from, the from the Virgin Mary, Mary and was, was made man. man. For our, our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried. On the, On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe, we believe in the, in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has, he has spoken, spoken through, through the prophets. The prophets. We, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. church. We, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. sins. We, look we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially our family and friends on Trinity's prayer list. They may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for our families, Kathy and Doug Gorney, Beth Grabowitz, Jill, Jay, Cody, and Hope Hanchi, and Stephanie, Rick, Hannah, and Clara Avrilla. We offer prayers for our military and their families. Anthony, Anna Marie, Vincent, Brian, Jerome, Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, Kevin, Jerry, Danielle, and Luke. We also offer prayers for our college students, Kelsey, Martha, Zach, Virginia, Gabrielle, AJ, Anna, Joshua, Lydia, Ben, Ashley, and Joe. Please join me in the prayer for Trinity. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us into your service. Our mission is to invite others to be a part of our community, inspiring them to have a deep and abiding relationship with you and to serve all in your name. Help us to respond to that call wholeheartedly 
Lead us boldly into the future. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. We delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Yeah, our mics work now. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> okay. Peace, everybody. Good morning, Seth. <laughs> He's having a hard time. All right, good to see everybody this morning. Thanks for being here. Um, just a couple of announcements. I just wanna thank, uh, the thrift shop is open today. Um, so thanks to Anita and the volunteers, um, just for an hour after church, just for us. Um, we've not yet, I should take this off, sorry. Um, we've not yet opened to the public per se. We're not open on Tuesdays and Saturdays yet. We're kind of easing into opening because we just don't wanna deal with the mask thing that's still a controversial subject not everybody wants to wear one and we don't want to police it so uh, but the thrift shop is open for your holiday shopping if you need extra serving platters decorations gifts anything and charlie says everything's half price is that right anita everything's half price and not only is it cheap it's cheaper than cheap so you want to make a visit over there if you've never been in go take a look uh, you, you'll find some stuff um, so that's open. So thanks to the thrift shop folks for that. Also, we are in our uh, stewardship season. This is our budget planning for next year. Um, we're hoping to take up our budget at the November meeting. That would be a lovely thing to be able to accomplish. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But what we need is to know um, if and how much you might be planning to donate next year. This sets our budget. If you're from another tradition where money comes from on high, some amorphous that's not how it works here. What happens is that the congregation supports the mission and ministry of Trinity. We don't get help from anywhere else. It comes from all of us. So if you um, have any questions about that, Frank and I are happy to talk with you about it. In the tidbits, there is a link. There's a letter from me explaining all of this, and there's a link that you can just click it, and it'll go to an online uh, pledge card. And then that email will come to me and to Denise. So if you want to change your pledge from this year, or if you've never pledged before, you can click on that. That having been said, if you like where you are and the amount that you've pledged this year works for you and you've been able to give toward it, you don't have to do a thing. We'll be happy to just carry it over to next year. That way you don't have to mess with anything. But if you want to change, just let us know. If you hate email, and you don't want to do anything online, these cards, which you've seen every year for the last bazillion years, are in the back on the table. You're welcome to pick one up. Take it home, pray about it, think about it, um, and then you could just drop it in the plate whenever you're ready. Um, but just want to thank everybody who's pledged so far or let us know where you are um, and what your thinking is. You know, we're always here to answer any questions. Um, lastly, Next week, we're going to do a really fun thing. We're sending care packages to all of our college students um, and Chris, our seminarian. So um, there's some signups if you want to participate, if you want to bring some stuff. We're going to do it before, in between services next week. So just come a little bit early next week if you want to help pack those things. We're even looking for people to write, you know, nice little notes. Say, hey, your Trinity fan of you. Hope you're doing well. Um, blessings on your final exams, you know, that kind of stuff. So if you want to do that, that's a great thing. Um, all kinds of signups are out on the bulletin board in the hall, so just check that out. Any questions about anything? Excellent. 
Okay. Are there birthdays in the coming week? No birthdays. Wedding anniversaries. Okay. No wedding anniversaries. Easy peasy. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Till the dust was left on stone, and all those nations, bright or thrown, went down to dust beside me. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of the children of Abraham to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, the power and the, the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. By Christ, the bread of heaven. of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ. For those of you on Zoom, this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. If you don't have communion kits any longer, we'd like to Christ, pick any up. The They're available heaven. on Wednesdays, or you can let us know and we can drop some by your home. Hopefully you've retrieved these from your space. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And you will open and consume and be part of the body of Christ. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. JJ, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. For him. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have you graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, Son our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ. And you have you fed, fed us with spiritual food in the, the sacrament, sacrament of his body and blood. blood. Send us now, now into the, the world, world in peace and grant, grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.